Good evening, everybody. It is uh, still April 24th. I just got those tanks unhooked here, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I did a video on the ex explanation of this drill. So let's get on it. We're losing our sun, so we're going to try and get over it quickly here, okay? So <sighs> number one question is, like, did you just pull this drill back from the main farm to have it up here? And the answer to that is actually no. This is a new addition. New to us addition. It is an 84 foot drill. Wind's a little chilly out here. Uh, it's an 84 foot drill, 12 inch space, three quarter inch openers, mid row banders, V packers, XTC. So it's basically it's the exact same drill as what we have back home. Uh, this is a 2015, mine's a 2016 back home. Now you might not notice the difference and if they're an if they were not side by side. But a 2015 and lower is a little bit more orangey paint. And a 2016 and up to like current, I do believe, is a little redder uh, Borgo paint, okay? There is some other options or options. There is a few other updates as well. Let's point out one obvious one. On the 2015 and lower drills, uh, the hose goes up and over this frame. On mine back home, it is actually a bit of a hole cut out and it's steel piping and it just goes right through the frame. That is about, uh, there's probably a couple other ones. Obviously the opener setup, the opener adjust. This is how you adjust your opener. So for every time you move it one, you're going a quarter inch, okay? So this is actually old school now. Um, I, I do believe from 2017 and up, uh, they completely redesigned this and they made it quite easy. It's just a quick pin that pops out and it just goes up and down. And it's super easy. You stick your pin back in. It doesn't ever seize up. These are very prone to seizing up. Very prone. In fact, the opener is going up and down, but my depth adjust is C solid. So this is exactly what happened to us on our drills. But you know that last year, uh, I guess it would be last winter now. We removed our Packer tire. We put all brand new bearings in there. Um, we removed this whole assembly. This bolt, this one right here, goes right through. And it, this whole, this whole uh, adjustment assembly actually pivots on that bolt and it's seized up in there. And on ours, we had to heat it up with a torch and pound it out. It wasn't a super fun job. Then we put new ones in with anti-seize anti-seize on there and uh, so far they're still good now that'll probably give us a few years because again they're very prone to season up hence why borgo updated them now you can update to the new design if you would like to for a cost everything's for a cost these days and we didn't want to spend that extra cost so we just took all of ours apart when we had time during the winter and uh, updated it so that way we can move it now this one like i said is seized and I do believe they all kind of are. Yeah, so that's a problem. That's a problem. Um, so on my drill back home, since they're all not seized, it probably takes me to set my depth because that's how you set your seating depth. You have to set each, every one individually, okay? And they all have to obviously be the same. If you're going for setting five, they all gotta be setting five. If you're going for setting eight, they all gotta be setting eight, right? So I can probably do it myself, my drill back home, probably 20, 25 minutes, something like that. Obviously with circumstances like this, it would be 10 times that. So let's get back to introducing the drill. We'll go to the tank next here. Obviously we're rocking the 950 cart. Um, so Jared's has a 950 cart back home. And this is basically identical to Jared's drill because Jared's is a 2015 as well. And he's rocking the 950 cart on an 84 foot, 12 inch spacing drill. So this is basically identical to Jared's drill. No, this is not Jared's drill. No, we, just for clarification, we did not pull a drill back up from home to park up here, okay? We did not. This is a new addition, like I said before. Um, though this one does have the auger. If I had the option, I'd probably choose the conveyor just because it cleans out better. Um, if you're gonna fold that hopper up like that, now a lot of guys don't, but we do. But if you're going to, 
you pretty much got to dump the leftover in a bucket because there's always some that you can't get out with an auger because they don't clean out like a conveyor does. So uh, then you got to, you know, you got to pack your pails up, dump your pails in every time you load. That does kind of get old, old, but um, you guys will probably have a few questions like why would you choose a 950 cart? over say a 1300 bushel cart like what you have in yours back home you know there's pros and cons to both obviously when you have the 1300 bushel cart loaded um, you can do more acres and i think a 1300 actually meshes very well with an 84 foot drill just due to you know you're covering more ground with an 84 and uh, you don't have to stop and load so often uh the 68 though back home is paired with a 950 i think that's also a really good pairing um but that being said the third i'm not a very i'm not a very big guy actually i'm only like five nine five nine and a half actually don't don't forget that no i'm joking it's i'm like five nine and i weigh like 150 pounds soaking wet so i'm not a very big guy but the conveyor on that 1300 is a very large conveyor and uh, when you're fighting it when wind of course we're always windy back home um it is a bit of a chore i can do it barely at times but uh ashen can definitely not do it and ashen is a full-time cedar or at least what she was prior to chapel being around and uh but ashton can move the auger or the smaller conveyor on a 950 no problem and she can load herself so that's also pretty important as well you don't want to have to have something where you're going to have to have someone else to go out there and help the operator load um and yes yes they're both hydraulic but you still got to swing it and then the wind's swinging it and then that, sometimes it's swung me right around in the wind and and i'm five nine hundred fifty pounds so that's the dealio on the drill now you're probably also asking yourself so why would you buy a drill for up here? I didn't think you were farming that much. Well, we're really not farming that much. And you got to remember that up here is Ash and I's kind of like hobby farm. We come up here to kind of get away from the main farm. And though it's actually becoming quite a bit more work than maybe we anticipated, or maybe we're kind of doing that to ourselves when we're kind of buying and renting land. But anyways, uh, my family back home has actually zero interest in farming 600 kilometers away from the main farm. They just and that's perfectly fine. And Ash and I, we're, you know, this is her stomping grounds. This is where she grew up. So, you know, that's kind of meaningful. That's important to her. And no, we are not going to move up here and just farm up here. That's not, that's not going to happen. That is not in the future plans. Nowhere. Nowhere do I ever see that happening. Um, I farm with my family back home. You guys know that. My family and I, we each have our own farms back home. We each have our own equipment back home. We each have our own land back home. That's all back home. Let's well knock my hat right off my head. That's all back home. Up here is again just Ash and I. We're literally like starting a farm again from scratch. So, as you know, uh, we have a little one. He's like five and a half months. His name is Chapel. He's our first, and uh, he is not a sleeper. He is uh, maybe he's kind of like his parents, but he is a handful, like a real handful. And all you parents out there know that having kids is like a full-time job just in itself. So up here, this this farm is like an infant stage infant stage so it's going to take a lot more work where my farm back home you know it's like 20 some years old literally to me even though our our main farm is like 100 and some years old but to me it's like my farm is like 20 some years old and uh you know it's on its own does its own thing now in saying that i definitely want to thank my brothers and the guys back there they're they've been pulling a lot of extra weight for me while we're up here and they're you know they're okay with that because we want to get this from infant stage, hopefully to toddler stage, and then hopefully we can get it into a teenager quicker than the actual years come, if you know what I mean. But anyways, we did not buy this drill. It, this was not in our budget, Ash and I's budget. This farm is completely a separate identity from the back, from my farm back home, like I said. And this is not in our budget. I mean, you're starting a farm from scratch. Like you gotta, you're picking and choosing what you're gonna buy and what you're not. Now, yes, we share some equipment, hence we pull the drill up and that's okay. But pulling a drill up costs like, you know, a fraction of what an actual used or new drill would cost. So this was not in our budget. We didn't buy this. But I definitely want to thank the person who did buy that. And that would be my dad. So uh, thank you, Pops. Uh, my parents are pretty freaking awesome. Actually, my whole family is. But, you know, uh, my parents are pretty freaking awesome. And uh, they're like, hey, you know what? We see a need. And uh, I'm going to buy the drill and you can just use it. If you would like to buy it from me in the future, awesome. If you want to, uh, if you don't want to buy it, that's fine, equally fine. I'm just gonna bring it back home to my farm, no big deal. 
So we're pretty thankful. I did not ask him to do that. We didn't ask him. It was just kind of a surprise and kind of caught us off guard. And we're like, oh, wow, okay. We didn't, uh, we're like, oh, all right. Sounds good. Like, we're super thankful. So um, now it needs a little bit of work, but we knew that because uh, I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do that. And it, it was supposed to come like a month and a half ago, right? Sorry, my nose is running out here. It's cold. Um, but obviously he's not going to get rid of his new drill, this drill, until his new drill comes. Now, this is not to be confused or compared with my sprayer deal that kind of fell through because I was guaranteed loaners and the loaners were sold. Totally, totally, totally separate thing. But um, it needs some foot line. I'll show you. It's, I can maybe get by, but uh, the, I grabbed a few on that side and I broke them. Mid-row bander blades are wore out. Needs a few points. Obviously, this is quite concerning that they're quite seized up, right? Oh, this one I can actually move a little bit. That's a good news. Um, it needs it needs some two-inch line. These are also pretty crispy. It's got a few taped up over there. It's got a bit of an oil leak right here. If I'm lucky, it's just a fitting, but it's got an oil leak. Also needs all line from the tank all the way to the manifolds. And that's pretty much a two person job, uh, yanking those things on and off. Got another little bit of an oil leak up here somewhere. Have to inspect that auger, obviously that chain, there's a chain right here on the back. It's kind of on a cover right up there. You can't see it, it's covered, but I need to inspect that. Um, ideally, I would like to change all the meter auger bearings. Is the last thing you want is have bearings go when you have it full and loaded and you're ready to rock and roll. This one does not have a hitch. Don't need it, I guess. Because we, we used to be liquid, you guys. I think I, I think I told you that. We used to be liquid fertilizer uh, for years and years and years. And then we actually switched to granular because uh, it was actually cheaper. So, like I said, it's 2015. And Jared's is also 2015. Jared's came with halogen lights. The... So obviously there was an update during the 2015 model years. Because these are the same LED lights that are on the 2016s. Also, I should note that 2016 and up, I do believe run an X35 Borgo Topcon monitor. 2015 lower uh, for a few model years anyway, or X30. There's a few differences. One is the scale. X35s have their, or the saddle tank is actually on scales. Uh, I can show you that when we get seating. And it's actually scaled right in on the X35 on the monitor. So you can see exactly pound for pound it's going out in inoculator or canola. This would just have cameras in the tank. Now they all have cameras in the tank, but it's pretty awesome to be able to see the scale. Let's see what's in here. Oh, I'm getting cold, you guys. I did not check out if there was wear on those poly augers, but it is pretty prone for those to wear. Now every farmer, every farmer spends a couple weeks prepping their drill. This drill just got here and he obviously did not prep his drill, right? Why would he? He traded it. Why would he invest any pretty more money into his drill when he has a new one coming? The downside is since it was supposed to be here a while ago, and I'm not upset about it or anything, I'm just stating a fact. Um, I was hoping to have time to get all this work done to it. The downside is, is we're probably going to start seeding tomorrow back home on the main farm. And this just got up here like a day ago. And I'm not going to have the time. So if I'm not going to have the time, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to get up here and just hop in it and go seeding. So... There is a chance that I might not even use this drill up here this year. I might have to spend, you know, I might have to still spend some money and bring my other drill up because it's fully operational. Because I can't just be like, okay, it's good. It's seeding is, we're probably going to be behind by the time we get here realistically already, right? Because there's a little bit of an overlap. You know, we don't typically finish seeding until the end of May back home. I do believe they tell me that, you know, traditionally they're mid-May when they actually start seeding. 
So I'm probably gonna be a week, 10 days behind by the time I get up here, cause I need to finish back home or at least get close to finishing back home. And uh, I can't just run up here and spend a week or two working on the drill. I would blow my whole seating window. So I'd still be more money ahead uh, to bring that drill up. Cause it only costs like, maybe it costs 15 grand to, to, to bring it up and take it back. Um, yes, that's still 15 grand, that is true. But if you miss some windows for getting your crop in the ground, you're talking a whole heck of a lot more money than that. Now, Mike, why wouldn't you just get somebody here to work on the drill? And I do have a few people who would probably be willing to do that, but they also have, they also farm. You know, whether it be my brother-in-law, he has to help his dad get ready to go. Uh, whether it be a local guy around here, you know, whether they got cows, they got, a, you know, it's calving season or they're farming, they got to get their equipment ready to go. So then you would need to find somebody who doesn't farm around here really. Uh, so that way they could just designate all their time working on the drill. Well, now you're going to have to find a place for that person to live, which I don't have. And then, you know, that person's probably going to want to come for at least the full season, if not year round employment. And that also is not in the budget currently yet. So it's a little bit more of a delicate situation, just being honest. So worst case scenario, I guess, oops, sorry about that. Worst case scenario, I guess I'll just bring my drill up and we'll, we'll, this summer, we'll take all these packer assemblies off, probably throw new bearings in them if we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it right. Or who knows, who knows how seeding's gonna progress. Could be terrible down there. Maybe at the tap of turn on back on the south farm, won't shut off, we won't, maybe we'll struggle to get the crop in the ground. In which case I'll be coming up here and we'll be trying to limp this drill through somehow. Also, I'd like to change all these pins because there's some where they're all rusted out and you know what happens. He's, he's put a few in. This one actually has a bolt with a pin in it. That's odd. He does have a monitor, he did, I guess. He doesn't have any more, I do. Uh, Intelligent Egg, which is, hold on here. So there's a, there's a sensor on each run. We just have them per tower. This is called a tower. We have them one per tower back home. Now, I don't know if they work or not. I have no idea. Of course, they can't work any. They, they can't be worse than our Agtron monitors that only lasted the first year. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I apologize. I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. Oh. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It does have the sectional control. You have to have sectional control up here for sure. We don't have to have it back home because we're, you know, we're dry most of the time and full quarters. But up here, you're going around all the sloughs and stuff. You have to have it. I think that's it. My nose is red. My nose is running. I apologize. I think I pretty much covered everything. Our sun's going down. I'm going to sure try, you know, get this thing ready to go, but... It's going to be like 16 hour days, 18 hour days back home. So it's going to be full hands on deck and we'll be going hard. But anyways, you guys get the, Whoa. <laughs> Woo! almost fell over backwards. Um, that'd be a terrible start to the seeding season. But anyways, get ready for a bunch of seeding videos. They're going to be coming at you and hopefully you don't get too sick of them. And uh, we're going to get cracking back there here right away. There's still snow on the ground. The melt is broke. It's starting to break really well. I, when I was coming up here, there's water running down the ditches, so that's pretty cool to see. Our dugout is very full, which is also awesome. Oh, we got some new used, used rubber on here. Upgraded some of that. So yeah. All right, guys. I think that's pretty much it. You have yourself a good one. We'll catch you on the flip side. I'm actually going to turn and burn. I'm going to head back here yet tonight. Our sun's nicely going down. I'm going to go hop in the truck and head back and get ready to go seeding tomorrow back home on the main farm. So I'll catch you guys later. Adios, amigos.